Hi everybody, hello, oh my goodness we've got messages coming in already, now the phone is already, is all the way over there and I'm over here, can you see Dougal there, say hello Dougal, there, <laughs> um, so I can look at my computer here, if only it would tell me where, where my live is, um, here we go, live broadcasts from Croatia, that's me. Right, and then can I see everyone's comments? Yeah, yes I can, hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Um, hello everybody, just let me know. Um, how California Camping, now we've got Sean from California Camping. He is moderating the chat tonight because obviously, as many of you know, Sean and Lizzie have already been to Croatia. Uh, not Croatia, sorry Sean and Lizzie, you've been to Slovenia. And to Austria as well, which is kind of where we are. Sorry about the lighting here, I'm trying to, how's that? Is that a bit better? So um, just while everyone's sort of logging in, um, it's been a really busy night on YouTube tonight. As um, I said on my tweet earlier, we had um, Bob and Jenny's Motorhome Adventures. They had their tour of the Peterborough show at five o'clock. We had the legs down su Sunday night natter at six. Trevor, please let Richard get a word in edgeways. And we had Cat, Wandering Bird, Germany Part 1 at 6.30. Didn't get a chance to finish that one, Cat, because um, I was kind of getting ready for this one. But uh, we might have a chat later about um, how you've got some of that fabulous footage. Uh, and then you've got us with California Camping. And so, hello from Croatia. And we're currently in a campsite called... Auto Camp, excuse me, Auto Camp Draga, which is in Moshkanichka Draga. I hope I pronounced that right. Sean, if you've got a chance, if you could put the link, please, to here we go. Oh, isn't he good? This, I, and it's an Axi site, um, so you can use your Axi card here. I found this through the Axi scheme. I must admit, I am, um, I've only been in Croatia for 24 hours, and I've got to admit that I am utterly blown away by this place and I've been trying to come to terms with why I like Croatia as much as I do and I think the reason that I've come to think that is because it's from what I've seen so far I'm going to show you roughly where I am on the map um, from what I've seen so far this little Riviera is eminently elegant and yet it's not in the slightest pretentious and Right, so I don't know if you can see this. This is going to be really interesting. Um, no, so um, we're kind of up there. Oh. No, this didn't doesn't work, does it, with the uh, with the screen? So we're kind of up just to the uh, west of uh, Rijeka on this little Riviera, Ooh, up in the sort of top leftish. Um, but we're kind of facing east and that's where we are, that's where Moshkinishka Draga is and it's just this really really elegant Riviera and not in the slightest pretentious and um, I am I'm really really more than a little bit in love with Croatia already after 24 hours and all I've been thinking of is um, coming back bringing my own rig or whatever and coming back for a month two months so um yeah anyway I'm just gonna have a quick hello to people who are um who've logged in so um excuse the glasses i do my moby impersonation hello contacts required i've got your question for later and sandra here we tow good evening all that's um karina and jewel so you're obviously back from your first sortie with the uh with the uh, Adria. Hello Willie and Caroline up in Scotland and Colin, John, uh, Stuart Grant. Oh my goodness you're all having a good old chat already. Hello Cat, Wandering Bird. Um, as I say didn't quite finish your Germany adventure I'm afraid because you know you've got to do this. Hello Shadows and Dawn, Stuart, Bob Earnshaw. Hello Bob. Um, got your question here later Bob. Um, and the Ponkster, thank you for letting me know you can hear. And Simon Ingram, hello Simon. Um, yeah, legs down. <laughs> As I say, Trevor, please let Richard get a word in edgeways. <laughs> so Colin Kelso is in Glasgow. That's uh, glad to hear it. Oh, and hello Lucy in Drum the Drochich. 
Um, even though I'm loving Croatia, it's like I'm seeing all these Scottish names thinking, oh. So yes, context required, what's Croatia like? I think I've already already given you an idea of how much I absolutely love it. Lewis, uh, up in Lewis, or you're away from Lewis now, aren't you? Feskama Lewis, or Feskama Lewis. I mean, that's good value, good um, and Jutta, good abend. Um, and Trisha, good how many good oil tap it. So, hello, oh gosh, so, and Stephen, and Irene, Stuart, Liam, Mads, hello, Mads, here we go again. So, hello, everyone who's tuning in. Um, it's wow, we've got lots of people here. Great to have you with us. Just going to go through a few questions that have been asked on social media, and then if anyone, um, wants to know anything really about this van. I am going to be doing, as you may have noticed, I've already done a first look at this Corrado V600, this flow. It's already on my channel and then I'll be doing a full review in it's probably going to be two, three, maybe even four weeks because I'm getting so much content to put out on YouTube and I can only do two vlogs a week because I'll come to that bit later as well. So um, there's also things that I still am waiting for the answer from Corrado. For example, um, this van doesn't have spark ignition on the harp, which I find incredibly surprising. Now, that could just be um, a regional variation on the on the product. Maybe the one in the UK will have spark ignition because like this one doesn't have a smoke detector because you don't need them in Germany, but you do in the UK. So, um, you know, a lot of things will have to wait for the full review in a few weeks to make sure that I'm got my facts straight. So first question was from Al McLean, what do I think of the Nissan Navara chassis rot? Um, for those of you who don't know, sorry this is nothing to do with camper vans, this is about Nissan Navaras, but I've got a Nissan Navara. I had a 2007, I replaced it with a 2015, three years ago, um, and the 2007 Nissan Navaras have um, chassis rot, where they're actually, the chassis are splitting in two. Um, I still don't know if Nissan have actually fessed up to it. However, even I, with the 2015, have been asked if I want to, well, no, it's been recalled, but it's not been recalled. It's like when you take it in for service, it's, they say, oh, we need to do some work on this and we're gonna need it for three days and have the tub off. Now, I actually paid, when I got my 2015 Navara, I actually paid 500 pounds out of my own pocket to get the chassis under sealed properly by a company up in Hertfordshire. So now the fact that Nissan want to do it for free, I'm gutted, basically. I've spent 500 pounds for nothing on trying to prevent Nissan Navara chassis rot. So Al, to answer your question, um, what do I think of it? I think Nissan aren't being terribly open about the Nissan thing. And people like me a 500 pound out of pocket some people have their Navaras written off and yes they are doing something about it but they're still not even like issuing an official recall as far as I they're just sort of when you take your van you, your truck in for service they're just saying oh 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 we need to do some work on it and uh, yeah so it's not good basically Al. Now then um, next question about back, back to Croatia and that's JMS and he said what's the political climate like in Croatia well to be honest, I don't know, because I'm just a tourist. All I can say is so far, after 24 hours in Croatia, the people here have made me feel so welcome. And everyone is really polite, and everyone I've come spoken to speaks English. And I, so, yeah, the, are there any undertones? I don't feel them. Obviously, I feel a lot more undertones, say, if I go to Scotland, because I'm far more up with the Scottish political side and by the way this is not an invitation for political comment because we try and keep politics and religion out of this channel um so political climate don't know jms but oh my goodness the people are lovely so friendly and they've all spoken english so far and do they make a good cuppa and that's what i was going to talk to you people about which is i am a tea man i drink tea i have tea in the morning tea in the afternoon and only after breakfast do i have coffee I come somewhere like Slovenia or Croatia or France or Spain and I go the other way. I have one cup of tea in the morning and then I'm on coffee for the rest of the day. I had a beautiful espresso on the beach today. 
I've um, got a mint tea on the go at the moment, but mint tea is always for the evening, excuse me. But I don't know, does anyone else find that, that you mainly stick to tea in the UK? You know, when you come across to Portugal or Spain or Croatia, you suddenly switch to coffee. I do. Or am I just weird? Don't answer that one. Um, now then, I'm going to do one more question, then come back to what people have written tonight. And that is someone, and I'm not going to say who, because it's not fair on them to say who, but they left a comment, I think it was on my YouTube community page, to say that they were worried that I've not uploaded for, onto YouTube for three days. Can I... Now, a lot of you will understand this, so I'm not talking down to anybody, and a lot, a lot of you will get this already, but for those of you who don't get it, there is only me. The only assistant I have is Dougal. Okay? That's the only staff I have. And trust me, he's not my staff. I am his staff. So I do the organising, the driving, the cooking, the cleaning, the washing up. And then I do the downloading, the backing up and the editing and the driving. Did I mention the driving and the planning on a day-to-day basis? Um, and a vlog takes about a day to get out. So the choice is... Um, when people say they're worried I haven't uploaded for three days, maybe, just maybe, I've been a little tiny weeny bit busy doing 14 hour days of driving and looking after myself and walking the dog and doing the laundry today and so on. So all I'd say is if you want to keep up to date then on a more real time basis then please, please follow my social media channels and stand by Sean. Um, so the first one is on Twitter, which is twitter.com and UJ Ditton, and also on Facebook and on Instagram. So if my glamorous assistant, there he goes, thank you, Sean. My glamorous assistant is kindly putting up the links to those social channels. Um, so if you want to keep up and you're worried that I haven't uploaded a YouTube video for three days, please follow me on social media and you'll get a more up-to-date um, picture of what's going on. Right, going to come back to people who are here this evening. Now then, oh, um, gosh, so sorry if I don't, sorry again, as ever, apologies if I don't get to say hello to everybody. Um, oh, I can never pronounce your name, is it ya Yaroslaw Lazischic? Um, glad to hear you. So I don't know where you are, ya can I just call you Yaro? Um, I don't know where you are, Yaro. Um, but anyway, glad to hear I'm liking it, thank you. Oh, and George, so George is that from Portugal, and Don Buongiorno, is that Italian? Oh my goodness, we've got someone here in Romania, um, and Dole is 49, welcome in Romania. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Bailey tour is currently in Romania, so um, I did text Lee today. Uh, Tin Ten, he might be checking in later on the chat if he's, but um, I know they've had a really, really, really tough time on that one and I think they're doing some really long days. So um, anyway, who else have we got? Lady Lexi, hello. Context required. Yes, I'm coming to your question, Mr. Context. Um, Caravanery, hello from South Wales. Um, Cindy from Missouri, thanks for tuning in Cindy, it's always a pleasure to see you. So oh, Willie has got a question about the Decato, how long time wise before I get tired? For, that's a really good question Willie. Um, Willie's asked how long before I, how long driving before I get tired? Willie finds four to five hours is enough during the day and I wanted to come to this so thank you Willie. Yeah four to five hours a day probably is enough. And what's interesting is what I'm doing right at the, at the moment is, you know, hashtag slow travel. It's all about the journey. It's all about enjoying it. And to give you an example, the other day, was it day before yesterday? I came over the Vršić Pass in Slovenia and I apologise to anyone who speaks the Slovak language for my terrible pronunciation. But coming over the Vršić Pass in Slovenia from... Austria and also I did another pass I've forgotten the last pass in Austria that day we left the campsite in Slovenia at 9 30 in the morning and we rolled into our campsite 
in where did I stay? Oh, is this one? Was it this one? No, no. Sorry, we left the campsite in Austria. We got to this campsite in Slovenia nine hours later, and in those nine hours, we had covered 152 kilometres. That's 100 miles in nine hours. So yeah, we stopped to go to Lidl to get some food, and we stopped to get some diesel, and we stopped to make some lunch, and we stopped to let Dougal out, and we stopped to take photo, and we stopped to take another photo, and another photo, and another photo, and more video. And around the, the Vršić Pass has 50 hairpin bends, and um, most of those you're going around, well going up especially you go in first gear so yeah really four to five hours I'd say is long enough and if you are doing slow travel um, you're not going to get far as we are finding and that's today, I took today off, we're just in Croatia, beautiful resort this place, got to look, how do I say it again, it's Moshkanichka Draga and um, yeah so yes so yes, Willie, I'd say four to five hours is long enough. Um, six hours. Um, cat, a good cuppa is life-changing, absolutely. John and Dawn, Coulson, only Yorkshire tea. Well, I have Kentish tea from uh, Pluckley in Kent, but that's because I'm from Kent, so there you go. Um, Slovenia has English breakfast tea with <laughs> there. Teddy Wanderer, hello Teddy Wanderer. Yes, Dougal's made himself very comfortable on there. And Carrington's, they're on a mint tea as well. <laughs> yes, coffee is better overall. Thank you, thank you, um, Sandra. Niall, hello Niall. But the dog does all the driving. I wish. Oh, if only I could train Dougal to drive. Oh, it's just jumped. Oh, hello from Los Angeles. What are the roads like compared to other parts of the world? So Michael C from Los Angeles, um, thanks for your question. I'm gonna come to that because as a lot of you know, I was joking about the left-hand drive in this van and I'm kind of used to driving on the right in my own vehicle with a, with a right-hand drive and I'm used to driving a left-hand drive in the United States but I have never before driven a left-hand drive in Europe and it's a jolly sight harder to do it in Europe than it is in the United States because I think just the, the roads in the States are so much more, so much wider. They're so much more sort of modern, built for, for traffic. Whereas, for example, the Vršić Pass was built by Russian prisoners of war 100 years ago. So it's, you know, I, I, um, I apologize right now but to Corrado, but I have curved this van a few times, which uh, I'm getting used to it now, but honestly, um, any anyone coming into the UK and hiring um, a, a right-hand drive car driving on the UK's roads is going to find that as challenging as I found driving this van with a left-hand drive on the right-hand side all I would say is it's fine when you're not tired so we're going back to the maximum four to five hours a day um, in the mornings when I'm fresh I'm absolutely fine with it and then after four to five hours then I might take a roundabout badly and curve the back wheel again so my advice to anyone who is gonna hire a van or a car and um, with the steering wheel on the wrong side it's absolutely fine it's doable you'll keep you know keep going to change gear or whatever with the wrong hand for a while but all I would say is um, the first day you do it especially if you've just flown in from the States or something like that just don't plan on driving more than like half an hour just really just make sure you're fresh that's all there's nothing to it as long as you're not tired that's so thanks for that question from Los Angeles um, right uh, left hand drive most American cars are automatic yeah that helps as well context so context required and it's a Volvo your badge um, you've also asked me what was my dream tow car and that was a really interesting question as well. I think the see your your um, avatar as a Volvo, and when I drove the Volvo XC90 dual engine uh, Caravan and Motown Club tow car of the year, I absolutely loved it. Really loved it, especially when you're on electric only. Um, it just oh, I cannot wait till electric cars hit the mainstream because. Um, 
when I was towing a caravan purely on electric, only at low speeds, like you know, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, oh, it's just so peaceful and blissful. And yeah, so I do like the Volvo XC series. I would say though, the favorite car I've ever towed my Airstream with has got to be the uh, Land Rover Discovery. Sorry to be boring, but they really are gorgeous tow cars. But I've thought about your question and my dream tow car would be a VW Transporter 4x4. Now, when I was got my Navara three years ago, I looked at getting a VW Transporter 4x4 with the biggest, blingiest engine you could find. And because I want a 4x4 so I can uh, tow a caravan out of mud. I still want to be towing the caravan, but I want the van to put the bike in and then maybe to use as a day van as well. So I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the caravan and I've got the camper van and I've got bike transport. However, as any VW aficionado will know, to get a transporter in a 4x4 with the meatiest engine it's got, I can't remember which one that is, blinged up to the max so it looks the bee's knees, the cat, uh, the cat's whiskers and the ant's pants, it was going to cost me the best part of something in excess of £40,000 including that. Um, oh, 240 PS, thank you Sean, I thought you might know that one. Um, it was going to cost in excess of £40,000 including that. My Navara cost just over £20,000 including that because it was the end of the line, it was the end of the D40s and at the time the Caravan Club, as it used to be called then, was running um, one of its member schemes where you got 20% off the price of a Navara which brought it down to twenty grand. So it was half the price of my dream tow car, which is a VW Transporter 4x4, 240 PS, blinged to the max. So there you go. That's uh, That would be my, my dream car. Towing, of course, um, an Airstream Colorado. What else? And then finally, the last of the pre-planned questions, and I'll come back to these, which is from Bob, Bob Earnshaw, who said he saw a Corrado 601, so the bigger version of this at the Peterborough show, What's the bed like? I will tell you, Bob, the bed is gorgeous. I, um, I've been sleeping sometimes nine hours a night. Now, this could be to do with the fact that I've been doing a lot of driving and, you know, even if not by mileage, by time. And then when we get to site, as I say, I've got to do stuff like, you know, download videos and all that kind of stuff. So I have been pretty tired, but no, the bed has been really good bed's been really good so I've really enjoyed that. Now then come back back to your questions then we'll go through the plan of what we're going to be doing for the rest of the trip and then call it a day. So um, here we go so Tom from S Ryan and Tom in Essex hello and Simon you're getting ready to go to the Hebrides oh goodness me I've missed something here from California camping the Bentley Ben yeah okay we'll just move on that one are the road surfaces where you are um, Lucy's question compared to Scottish roads at the moment with potholes and such now Lucy I find Scottish roads at this time of the year to be pretty bad and then you come back at the end of May early June and they're all absolutely fine um, I've done I did this in 2015 where I drove out to the Hebrides in sort of March just after March early April and the roads were terrible and then I drove back in June and they were fine where they'd fixed all the potholes but generally the roads have been good I am um, Belgium and Germany must have spent gazillions on their roads recently because Belgium used to be quite bad for road services as used to be Germany and I think they've just invested huge amounts. There's loads of roadworks in Germany at the moment where I think they're replacing their um, roads so they are investing heavily in their, their, their roads and um, they are very good I have to say. I've, I've been pleasantly surprised and here in Croatia so far been very good. Um, now will I be doing stealth camping? No because um, Wild camping is illegal in Slovenia and as good as in Croatia and I am being accountable for my camping on YouTube so no I will not be I'm afraid. Um, hello Louise, 
uh, oh yes, and Kat, she nearly got run over by an electric car. Yes, that's the problem with it. And electric buses, hybrid buses. Uh, my friend Steve was over from Seattle last week and he nearly got run over by a hybrid bus because he just didn't hear it because he was used to um, pet diesel engine buses from 20 years ago when he lived here. Uh, Christian, driver sits to the middle of the street as long as you drive. Yeah, it, if, trust me Christian, it, it takes a while <laughs> to, uh, to get the uh, hang of it. Um, Park Nest, hello. Oh, so you saw a T25 with four-wheel drive. Oh, I say. Um, Chastepi, hello from London. How do you find Wi-Fi and upload your vlogs from Stelios in London? Um, the site Wi-Fi here is incredibly good. Um, I hope you can sort of see me right. I can see my on my laptop. It doesn't look terribly good, but the Wi-Fi I found on sites in Austria, Slovenia and here in Croatia has been infinitely superior to the site Wi-Fi is generally in the UK and it's free here as well. Um, Willie, have I looked at the Amarok? Yes I have. I do like the Amarok. Um, it's just that bit more expensive than the Navara and it, I know this sounds really silly. The handbrake's on the wrong side. I'm sorry if, if you're going to sell a car in right in right hand drive guys do it properly or not at all <laughs> so yeah it just bugs me that um fifth wheels keep on the turning now i'm spending more time in vans with fixed beds when i move to an airstream or another band with a fixed bed hmm it's not so much the fact it's a fixed bed it's the fact it's a proper mattress um yeah uh i'm finding my back is starting to hurt a bit in uh, the makeup beds, so we will see. We will see. Um, those of us that tow Pennine, oh, Niall, so you got a Pennine, yes, 4G signal, yeah, 4G is pretty good as well. Park Nest, um, the, the only country that surprised me was Germany, um, because the phone signal in Germany was pretty awful actually. The 3G wasn't, and the 4G wasn't and most of the time I was on edge whereas so I don't know quite why Germany was so poor when Belgium and Slovenia and Croatia have been really good um, so yes Wi-Fi oh my goodness um, Bob Earnshaw they're off to the Hebrides along with, with Simon, uh, Simon Ingram hello Mr Trudgeon hello the Trudgeons welcome um, fashionably late. Oh, Stephen's here. Hello, Stephen and Carla. Um, so they've enjoyed the Scottish roads. So Carla's blog was um, the Legs Down blog of the week this week. So um, I don't know if I didn't ask Sean to get that link ready, but um, Stephen, if you've got the link to Carla's blog, if you could put it on the chat, that would be great because it's really well worth watching. Hello, Marilyn. Um, welcome and Catherine and oh it's just jumped again I hate it when it does all this jumping so I think there's some so there's some chatting going on here um, and Michael in Los Angeles do I miss the room of a travel trailer compared to the van that's another great question Michael you're 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 rocking on the questions tonight one thing I wanted to say was everyone is aware that this van is the same layout as the one I took to Scotland. The experience I'm having in warmer weather is night and day because most of the time that door is open and we've got the daylight coming in. I'm hardly ever sitting at this dinette and thank goodness because it's really uncomfortable. Um, most of the time we've got that too late awning pulled out and sitting on the step or sitting outside or this afternoon sitting on the beach. So yeah, night and day. Um, I don't miss the room of the travel trailer so much because of the warm up weather. This layout really suits the warm weather. Whereas um, in the winter, I found this layout a bit claustrophobic and I really miss my caravan. Um, hello, Indie Projects. Um, nice t-shirt. Yeah, my Indie Projects t-shirt got going on here. Um, I have a technical question for Theo, so just talk amongst yourselves, I don't know if that's B or Theo, 
but um, Indie Projects put up a really good video about their vlogging kit, or Theo did, about the vlogging kit. And Theo and I have the same camera, the Sony A7 is R, isn't it, Theo? But Theo mentioned a Tokina lens, but on the full frame, Theo, does that not vignette, or do you have to have it on like 15, 16 mil? Just asking because I've been looking at Sony lenses and they're like £2,200. <sighs> oh, so anyway, back to your chat. Um, Romania, apparently the Wi-Fi and 4G is very good. I can believe that because um, it's very good here in Croatia. Ah, Craig has asked, what kind of MPG am I getting so far? To be honest, Craig, I haven't a clue because the van came with a full tank of fuel and I've only filled it once. So I took a reading when I filled it. When I fill it next time, I will do a calculation, but of course it's all in liters and um, kilometers. So I'm gonna have to convert everything. But when I did this with the previous camper van, um, it was about 30 miles per gallon. I don't think I'm gonna get 30 out of this because of all the up and down over mountain passes. Um, now then, what else, what else, what else, what else? So, so people saying hello to the indie projects. Um, hello from Pakistan, hello Abid, thank you for joining in. As I say, I always say this, but it's just great when you get all people, um, people sort of all from all around the world, um, you know, joining in on these live chats. Um, Paul and Stephen, I won't let you put a link, but oh well, anyway. Okay, so finally, so that's that. Um, <laughs> Ian, I could be tra traveling to Paris with Eurostar. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Ian, all I can say is um, I left Eurostar a year ago. I still love the company. And um, my advice would be go standard premiere. Is that what they call it? Yeah, standard premiere. Um, book in advance, go standard premiere because you get the much bigger seat, you get the little meal. Um, it's much better than standard and it's only a tiny bit down from business premiere which is super huge expensive so yeah go standard premiere that's what that's that's my top tip for traveling with Eurostar and enjoy it um, I do have a real soft spot for Eurostar even if I wasn't invited on the press train to Amsterdam but we'll move on um, <laughs> So finally, just going to tell you what the plan is now, and that is, um, a lot of you may know that I've got another YouTuber who's flying out to Croatia on Wednesday. He's going to be joining me. His name is James Popsis. He's a very popular, he runs a very popular photography channel. He is a hoot. He's absolutely hilarious, and I'm looking forward to spending four days, five nights with James. Um, some of you may think this van's a bit cosy for two. Yep. I've got his tent and his mattress and his sleeping bag under the bed. He's outside. Because <laughs> so, I'm mean like that. I'm really cruel. But I've told him if it rains, I'll let him sleep on the floor. You know, I'm nice like that. I really am. So what we're going to do is I've just found... Um, now then, I need to look at the map here. Because I'm going to pick up James in Split. And I've realised that... I can do some islands on the way down. I can go to the island of Kres, which I uh, can't really show you. It's spelled C-R-E-S. Um, so I can get a ferry from about half an hour from here to the island of Kres. From Kres, I can get another ferry to the island of Kurk, K-R-K. And then from Kurk, I can get another ferry to the island of Rab. And then from Rab, I can get a ferry back to the mainland and cut out all this corner here of Croatia and apparently the islands of um, some of these islands or all of them they were stripped of their trees back in the Venetian times for Venetian shipbuilders and because of the winds the trees have never grown back so I'm kind of thinking that these islands might be something like an Adriatic Hebrides so the fact that I've got the, the opportunity to discover these islands, I only found out about them yesterday. Um, I use the rough guides. I, I've been reading the rough guides. I love the rough guides as as um, planning my trips. And yeah, they. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So that's what that's the plan. And pick up James in split. Uh, he wants to go to Senj or Seni, um, and then after that, who knows? 
so really don't know so i'm going to come back to your questions and then call it a night so where are we where are we where are we um Oh, Bob. Oh, thank you for that, Bob. Bob, yes. Um, Bob Earnshaw, his channel, um, they got a great video about changing the dashboard in the Decato, which I need to look at because this is still saying it's something like Sunday the 23rd of February and all the time's wrong. So, yeah, thank you for that, Bob. Um, so, context required. Where's the most obscure place I've had a viewer comment from? Mm, obscure? I don't know, but I think... I don't know, see, I mean, Puerto Rico, Pakistan, I'd just say exotic. I'd like exotic more than obscure. Oh, Gail's here. Hello, Gail. Hello, Andrew and Dougal. Gail, uh, Dougal, your auntie Gail's online. Oh, he's, he's, you can see he's really excited about that. Um, who else? Um, oh, so Pro Se is wondering where you can rent RVs in Europe. Um, I don't, I would just use an internet search engine. I haven't, um, I, I don't know, to be honest. I would just, why travel alone? Beautiful places to share with somebody. Yes, well, James is coming out in a couple of days, so he will be here. Um, Cres is amazing. Thank you, Peter. That's uh, nice to know, because I know nothing about it. Um, da, 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 da. Favourite place you visited in the caravan motorhome tent? Outer Hebrides, next one. <laughs> Oh, good. Goodness me. Willie says there's quite a few naturist islands in Croatia. We'll have none of that nonsense, thank you. <laughs> no. No, gosh. None of that. No. Um, yes, the adjective. Uh, so, yeah, sailing or kite surfing. I didn't bring my kite, Sandra. Um, I will do when I come back for three months with all my toys and my motorbike, because my goodness, there will be. Last weekends, how many electrical how many electrical points are there in this van for charging? We've got 240 volts. We've got one, two, three. I think we've got three, 240, and two, 12 volts. Um, so I think that's that, um, Phil and Juliet. Um, oh dear, I'm losing. Luke, uh, da, 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 da. Right, so I do, I do, I don't believe Dougal's sleeping. Yes, he is, Nuno. Dougal is sleeping here. Yes, right. S Dougal running free on a naturist beach. All right, can we just cut the whole naturist thing, right? I will not be vlogging from any naturist things whatsoever. I still remember someone suggesting I did that, and then I, no, no, no. I am definitely a clothes-on kind of a person. But again, that's why I like Scotland, because you usually have to wear clothes in Scotland. Um, right, um, so I think that is roughly it. So, um, as I say, uh, next vlog should be out on Wednesday uh, getting loads and loads oh hello David getting loads and loads of footage for you it's just now sorting all that out into vlogs and at the same time I don't want to spend all my time I've only got this van for two weeks and I don't want to spend half that time sat in front of a computer when I could be out there getting some stonking footage so um, there won't be any more than two vlogs a week I'm afraid and uh, because I just want to make the most of being here. Uh, as I say, I'm looking forward to James's company. That might add a new angle to things. And obviously he's going to be vlogging on his channel as well um, about this. Sorry it's got dark because I was going to show you a little bit of the campsite. But um, never mind. You can see it online. Um, Sean did put the uh, the link to uh, Auto Camp Davaga up earlier. I, this is a really, really, really nice campsite. And they're giving me a lovely pitch. And as you can see, the, the internet's pretty all right as well so as i say um that's about it a huge thank you to sean at california camping for uh, moderating the chat and putting all the links in and being a, a wonderfully efficient person there so thank you for that um and of course just thanks for everyone who sent a question either on twitter or youtube or on facebook and as ever to you all for your questions tonight and any more you've got the social media contacts if you want to know anything more about the van let me know and i'll try and fit them into the review which will be out in a few weeks so i guess that just leaves me to say from croatia from dougal and from me can you see all right i'm going to be brave and move the camera now because we're nearly finished there all right dougal
Dougal, they're going now. Dougal, Dougal, would you say hello to your Auntie Gail, Dougal? Yeah, Dougal, yeah. <sighs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.